cooking mounds here, here near the side of us. These are termite mounds made from dirt and termite saliva. And when they cook in the African sun, they come out as hard as concrete, so elements like to use them as scratchy posts. After one, they run it down like those there on the right. And other animals use them as lookout points for predators, not even tall grass. And they do get pretty tall here, like this one up on your left. Want to see cattle for the try the first domestic either. Horns they have been about six feet long, be about 20 inches around the base. Horns are actually honeycomb shaped on the inside, so they're pretty light. And they have blood vessels that flow through them, it's kind of using my radiators to help pull themselves down when they get tight. Now, the animals out here on the savannah have their own roles. For example, elements like bulldozers, knock down trees, allows for us to grow. Giraffes like the pruning shears, the leaves in the trees allows light to shine through. Rhinos, banners, and England animals that size, like the lawnmowers, keep the grass and edge short. And small animals kind of like the weed backers around the edges. So to naturally we all see through a system just like this. Here he is, what do you have to lose eat? You see that other coli here on the right? Also the right, this gray antelope, it's called a water buck. They have all the secretion that comes out of the coat. Let's get straight through the water, get away from the predators. See some gray animals. Those are the white bearded wildebeest, also known as a gnu for the sound of the mink, spelled G N U. It's kind of like how cows boo, to wildebeest do. Really small antelope out there with them. Those are called springbok. They're actually fully grown, weigh about 100 pounds and about three feet tall. They spring up to about 11 feet up in the air. And the dark brown antelope there. Those are the sable antelope. The sables are the official emblem for the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. And those horns occur backwards, but about five feet long. These are for sparring during mating season. And when you see a group of sables, the darkest color brown one is the dominant one, or the lead of the group. The lighter color brown ones are the youngsters, or the less dominant ones. And we have some giraffes right here on your left side. Two different types of giraffes out here in the savannah, particularly the Anamasai. These here are Armasai giraffes, kind of have a jacket that are too. Reticulated giraffes have the name for the Latin word particulata because of the net line pattern that they have. So that's how you tell the difference. Reticulated net pattern, Masai is jacket. And they will sit around 18 to 20 feet tall, space of the world's solace land animal. And when they're born, they run around 6 feet tall. You see those adult sables there to the back right? And we're heading into Monkey Point now, which is the beginning of Elevate Country. Monkey Point gets his name from a troop of animals at the pier. Males have variety of blue markings, females have those markings on their faces. They also have both the faces and the rear ends. He's very tall for mine. You might be able to see some here on the left side, like they hang up on the rocks, up in the trees. You see the big dominant male manager out to your front left, just on the edge of the bushes. So he's walking that way. Oh, okay. Largest monkeys here in Africa, fully grown male mandrel, weighs around 100 pounds. Fully grown female, weighs around 30 pounds. <laughs> We'll see if we can find some elephants. Now here at the reserve, we do have scientists learning the vocalization matters of the elephants. We're trying to get a better understanding of how they communicate with one another. So hopefully with all the information that we learn, we'll be able to have better protect them both on and off the reserve. So another bridge up here, so make sure you stay seated. This one's worse than the first one. Now, some fun facts for you about the elephants. Both male and female African elephants carry those big white ivory tusks. So really the only way to tell them apart from other sizes. Males are much bigger than females. Males weigh around 12,000 pounds. Females weigh around 8,000 pounds or so. They also have a really long gestation period, so no other elephant's pregnant. She's pregnant for about 22 months. Almost two years. Anyway, the birth of baby, baby weighs around 250 to 300 pounds. And I'll stay right by the mother's side for about 15 years or so. It's a pretty long time, it's just like And after they reach maturity, they're females, stay right with the herd, because that's what all the adults in the herd are, females. 
if they're bailing off it on their own, they miss on the lane. And these are some red clay pits here. If you look off on either side, you see some tusk marks. These are the elephants. I believe this red clay gives us a bind of minerals that don't get in the ring of the diamonds. Slimey scuba pink of all the bingo species. Get a pick of their feathers to the beta carotene that they eat, found in fish and shrimp. Now, while flamingos are born, they're actually gray in color, they look like little gray fuzzballs. But it'll lose gray, so it'll just turn pink after a while, but we know the carotene. So, pretty much like the same goes. You don't know what you Some pretty good signs. They're right there. Oh, white rhino. They're right there. Bigger than the guzzles of white rhinos. White rhinos weigh around 5,000 pounds. And unfortunately, they're also being poached for their horns, which are highly valued on the black market. So there has been a struggle with some of Africa's biggest game reserves to protect these animals from poachers. And if nothing else is done to help but to protect them, they're on the way back to the endangered species list, and quite possibly the extinction list as well. So very soon there will be more white rhinos left. You see that baby there? Oh, thank also, you look at your left side here, you've got a cheetah. Turn up to the direct left here, then there's two more to the back left. World's fastest land animals run about 60 miles an hour. Only for a short distance, more of a sprinter, not a long distance runner. And they are one of the only predators to hunt in the daytime, because they use their excellent vision and not their smell. Big rock formation up here that's called a kopi, it's where lions like to hang out. And we got the male and a female right up here on their left. And a second female a little bit further down. Biggest carnivores here in Africa, but they will swim about 18 to 20 hours out of the day, inactive. So they're just sleeping or laying around trying to conserve their energy. Then they use the rest of the time for the hunting, which is mainly at night. It's up to the females to enjoy the hunting for the group. Males are helping out too often, pretty much just around for protection.
the way right here on the right side. Two, huh? Looks like here we see some more high grows. More high is around the largest row available. Right out to your back left, you see a couple more dogs. Mm -hmm. Now looks like here we got some ostrich eggs, world's largest bird eggs. Weights about three pounds each. And then up to the front brain, we got two brown antelope white markings on them. These are called Batabak. They are now extinct to the wild due to poaching. Because there are no more of them. We found a few that are left of protective reserves just like this one. Wildlife Reserve, we've been trying to build some reintroduction programs, which means that we're trying to bring back animals that once used to live around here, but were pushed out by the local farmers or have been devastated by poaching. And luckily enough, here around here, a farmer decided to donate some of his land to us, which is on this right here. Kind of been using it as a bit of a rehabilitation area. Something we've been working with recently here on either side, these white desert antelope with survival hordes. These are called addicts. What's pretty cool about them, they don't have to drink a lot of water throughout their entire lifetime. They get all the water that they need for the moist plants to eat. But due to poaching, there is now less than 500 addicts of the entire world. So there are not very many of them left. towards it in now, make way back up towards the warden's post. So it's not it's not thank you very much for choosing Kilimanjaro Safaris for your wild and happy adventure. We know there's one of those working with the around here being a show so it's not thank you very much. As we make way towards the warden's post, make sure you check all around you don't leave it if you're blind behind. And if you just show one back up to the village of around over there. And if you only see some more animals you can always head over to the bank on a forest trail it's gonna be right in the to the warden's post. Over there, Pank Down, you can see some gorillas, naked bull rats, and colibus monkeys. They even have an underwater hippo viewing area, which is pretty cool. Definitely want to go and check that out. Pank Down, a forest trail. Right Alright, wait for that truck to clear out. We will pull right on in.